Hey, this video is a response to uh, the EEV blog episode 85 in which Dave Jones interviewed Doug Ford about high voltage probe design and since I'm building my own high voltage probe uh, the, the video was quite helpful especially Doug Ford's Secret World of Oscilloscope Probes article that he wrote um, I highly recommend reading it if you want to learn all the stuff that you never learned in school about oscilloscope probes. So my problem that I have is that I want to make a high voltage differential probe uh, to look at various voltages on the primary circuit of my Tesla coil but um, you know and that's you know many kilovolts around 10 to 20 kilovolts is what I w would like to measure and um, preferably I would like to use a differential probe as well and I have a differential probe the Tektronix P5200 and uh, but the main problem is that it will only go up to 1 kV on each input 1 kV with respect to ground and uh, it's it's uh, selectable push the button here for one fiftieth attenuation or one five hundredth attenuation, and it works very well. Um, but you know, I want to measure around 10 kV, not just 1 kV, with respect to ground. So um, I've also tried diligently to use the my uh, differential pair of uh, P6015. 20 kV probes here, but uh, despite all the, the compensation procedure laid out in the manual, um, I was unable to get as good results as I got with the differential probe down here. So here I am making my own high voltage probe design based on Doug Ford's design that he laid forth in the video. And I'm going to go one step further and demonstrate how this thing works, both in an ideal circumstance where it's in open air with no parasitic capacitance and also with the more realistic circumstance that Doug Ford um, experienced when he put his his RC network into uh, a copper tube and filled it with potting material and then there was this, all this parasitic capacitance so I'm going to simulate the parasitic capacitance so here's the setup that I have I've got this really sweet Tektronix 106 square wave generator. It, it's um, it's um, high amplitude output. It can go up to negative 120 volts. Um, it'll the, the the square wave will go from zero to negative 120 volts. Um, it's got it actually has four vacuum tubes in parallel for the output stage. It also has uh, these two outputs if you want to get really quick rise times of of less than one nanosecond it'll have a positive rise time output here and then a negative rise time output there really really quick rise times but I'm not going to use this half of it I'm just going to use this half of it the the high voltage output portion of it um, because when you're playing around with high voltage probes it's best to actually apply a high voltage to them so the output of the probe itself will be significantly higher than the noise floor and also since the output varies from 0 to negative 120 volts I got a 1 microfarad capacitor right here which will give me a uh, AC signal of plus minus 60 volts so here's the circuit that I got built up here's the function generator with the 600 ohm output impedance and 1 microfarad cap goes down to the input of the RC network these are 10.5 meg ohms each and parallel capacitors 100 picofarad each. Um, Doug, Doug used 10 picofarad but I'm using 100 picofarad because that's basically what I got. These little orange things are actually rated for 6 kV each which is especially good since I'm designing this this whole thing for 20 kV. So as far as DC is concerned I've got uh, 63 meg ohms here and then I got a 20 meg ohm in parallel with 4 meg ohm um, impedance to ground inside of the Tektronix P5200. Um, 
it doesn't exactly look like this on the inside but as far as the specs are concerned it's got each channel has four mega ohm to ground and seven picofarad to ground and then the and then each input goes to this max um, diff amp and then other electronics and then that goes to the scope but basically the resistor network is designed such that all these resistors in combination with this 4 mega ohm um, give a, an attenuation of 1 20th and that coupled with the 1 50th will give me 1 1000th attenuation or with this one I will have 1 10,000th attenuation and I can measure up to 20 kV and of course I'd have to build two of these one for the positive input and then another for the negative input and then these other capacitors here these are the compensating capacitors here this one is variable and then these are the simulated parasitic capacitances that I can uh, turn them off and on by throwing a bunch of switches here to ground alright so here it is running and already compensated um, the dip switch here all the switches are off so we're not actually using these 10 picofarad capacitors or not we don't have any parasitic capacitance in the circuit yet and this variable capacitor is this one right here nice old school parallel plate uh, tuning cap but basically you can see I'm at 1 kilohertz here and if I vary the capacitance then the output in blue varies the actually that's the output of of this thing here of the differential probe the input in yellow is coming from the square wave generator and here we can see at 10 kilohertz and at 100 kilohertz which is what I'm really interested in uh, for my Tesla coil see that the input output relationship is fairly linear even if I step it up to one megahertz it's certainly not a square wave anymore but the output nonetheless has the same shape as the input plus a little bit of a delay that's no big deal and if I go to lower frequencies here I am at 1k 100 Hertz and let's go down to 10 hertz that little waviness there that's just some 60 hertz noise but you can see over the whole range it's a very nice one to one or or should i say a one to one thousandth ratio that i'm getting out of this thing which is what i want at least for low voltages when i have it in higher voltages then i'm going to push this button so I get the 1 500th ratio or 1 10,000th total with this thing included. Now I'm going to measure the compensation capacitance to see where it's at. First I'm going to turn off the function generator and leave everything else all connected. I got this uh, RSR model 2821 LCR meter from Electronics Express and you can, you can actually see the waveform that it's applying there it's 1 kilohertz but uh, basically I'm reading 320 picofarads um, it's important to take this measurement with everything still connected because you can see if I take off the function generator or if I take off that, then take off the uh, differential probe, then you can see it all varies a whole lot. So let me put those back on. And 318 or so, you know, that's pretty much where I want to be. So let's check the math with his compensation capacitance, make sure it's okay. Um, I saw on the video in Doug Ford's and, and Dave Jones video that um, if your resistance ratio between if your if your voltage division basically is 1 20th then your capacitance ratio um, all these caps 
compared to these caps would be the reciprocal of this. So this capacitance plus all the other strays going all around that, that's what I'm actually measuring. That capacitance should be 20 times of all of these in series. So I've got six of these 100 picofarads in series. I'm going to use my old school LED calculator here. 100 divided by 6 is, of course, 16.6666. And then multiply that by 20. And we get 333 picofarad. And 333 is good compared to what I'm measuring. That's about a 1% error. So I would say that this high voltage probe is definitely compensated as it is. Now let me turn the function generator back on. Got to wait for the tubes to warm up. There we go. See it starts going down on DC and then it takes a while for the capacitance to uh, for the signal to move up to zero volts, zero volts in the center. And then there's all this nasty noise too. That usually goes away once once it heats up after a minute. Okay, so it's all compensated right now as it is in free air. Now I'm going to simulate by switching these uh, capacitors on, I'm going to simulate putting it into a shield, copper shield pipe and potting. And you can see there's already a response at uh, 10 kV, or I may mean, not, 10 hertz I'm going at here. Let me step it up to 100 hertz. And you can see there's a, it's a really slow step response and you watch as I increase it from 100 to 1 kilohertz the amplitude of the output goes down quite a bit and then if I continue 10 kilohertz and 100 kilohertz and even a megahertz the amplitude stays pretty level and that's what Doug was experiencing he experienced a one-to-one -one ratio at low frequencies and then at a certain point it just went down to about half of the amplitude at higher frequencies and for this one that happens between 100 and 1000 Hertz now I've got it back on 1 kilohertz, and I'm going to vary the compensation capacitor. I'm going to decrease the capacitance here until the output closely matches the input. Let me turn it up to 100 kilohertz, since that's what I'm really interested in for my particular application. And you can see they are pretty darn close. I'm looking at basically 20 volts per division for the input and 20 millivolts per division for the output. So that's a one one thousandth of a ratio. So let me go down here to 10 kilohertz and 1 kilohertz and you can see there's starting to be some distortion here. Let's decrease from 1K to 100 Hertz. And you can see it gets really worse. But that's about as bad as it gets. At 100 Hertz, there's this little dip here. But then, if I decrease again from 100 Hertz to 10 Hertz then that dip it stays there but it becomes less of a portion 
of the uh, of the square wave. It only appears at the start of the square wave and then the rest of it is fairly flat. But all in all, that's not bad. I won't be I'm not going to be measuring anything at 100 hertz. I'll be at 100 kilohertz and it works very well and of course this is not exactly 100 kilohertz since it's a square wave it's got all the the higher frequency harmonics and I'm not seeing any distortion here even if I go up to 1 megahertz which is the highest that this square wave generator will go it's not much of a square wave anymore but nonetheless the output very closely matches the input now I'm going to take a capacitance measurement again, turn off the function generator, and hook this up. I'm getting about 200 picofarads now. Well, I hope you enjoyed going a little more in-depth into this high-voltage probe design. I know I learned a lot, and... Um, I don't really expect these capacitances to be, you know, 10 picofarad each once I actually build the whole thing. I don't expect to have that much parasitic capacitance in there. This is, I just put these 10 puffs in here as a worst case scenario. But basically that's a really good setup that I had here to show the effects of parasitics. And also it's an advantage to use larger capacitors here in parallel with each resistor. Um, because then the parasitic capacitance will have less of an effect. If this is if this is much much smaller than that, then the parasitics will have not nearly of as big of an effect. If you are using 10 picofarad or less on each of these, then you might have a problem. But if these are sufficiently large, then the parasitics won't be quite as bad. Well, I'm done here. Thanks for watching.